Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tracy and if you don't know me, I have a passion for upcycling clothing and I teach sewing on here. I hope each and every one of you had a great holiday. So excited to finally share this holiday dress. This design was featured in my New York Fashion Week show. I was more than happy to create a sewing pattern for you guys. So it's available on Etsy. So many of you have also been asking for more coverage. So I've also given you guys the option to make this exact dress, but with sleeves and a closed back. For the bodice portion of this dress, it's very important that you use a four-way stretch. So that just means that your fabric stretches in like both directions. For the skirt portion of this dress, I do recommend a lighter weight fabric. So like a chiffon is quite beautiful. I have linked all of the required materials down below and I even linked some options for you guys. So yeah, let's get into this tutorial. Start by taking your fabric and cutting out all of your pattern pieces. So just keep in mind that you're either going to be making version one bodice or version two, the main difference being one of them has a sleeve and the other doesn't. The bodices of these dresses, I went to the thrift store and just picked up some gorgeous velvet tops. If you find something at the thrift store, just make sure it stretches in both directions. I prefer to use a rotary cutter when I'm cutting out all of my pattern pieces. It just makes my life easier, so it's just really fast to just put a pattern weight down and take the rotary and just go all the way around. I recommend using a mesh fabric for your lining fabric. Version one, the whole bodice is lined. And version two only has a front bodice, a back bodice, and a sleeve. And you only need to cut out a lining just for the back piece. Now we can sew version one bodice together. So take your front and your back at the side seams, place right sides together and just pin it in place. Also do this to your lining pieces. Take it to your sewing machine and sew a quarter inch. Don't forget to back tack. I also take it to the overlock machine just because I like my insides clean finished, but this isn't necessary because stretch fabric doesn't fray. After sewing the front and back bodice together, take your strap and place right sides together at the shoulder. Pin it in place. Do the same thing to the lining. Take it to the sewing machine, sew a quarter inch, don't forget to pack tack, and then just overlock that seam allowance. After you attach your straps, take your chalk and mark seven inches from either side of the center back. This is where we will be placing our tabs with our ring so we can have adjustable straps. To create the tabs, you're going to place right sides together of two strips and just sew a quarter inch on each side. So I have the exact measurement of your tab on the pattern. So after you turn it right side out, you're going to just take your pattern piece and cut it down to that size. I'm using one inch rings and slides to create these adjustable straps. So in the description box down below, I've listed all the required materials and I have linked some rings and slides for you guys. Feed your tab through the ring and just pin it together and make sure when you place it on that mark, you place the ring facing down. So just pin that in place and do the same to the other mark. Take your lining and place right sides together. Only pin the front neckline. After pinning the front neckline, take it to the sewing machine. Sew a quarter inch seam allowance. Don't forget to back tack. And then take it to your overlock machine and clean finish your ends. After sewing your front neckline, you want to push your seam allowance towards the lining and we're going to do an understitch. So push it towards the lining and just do an eighth of an inch top stitch all the way down. The understitch will help the lining fold under. Make sure you have right sides together still and pin along the back neckline. Take it to the sewing machine and sew a quarter inch and then overlock that seam allowance. And now we can take a safety pin and pin it to the seam allowance at the strap point. Push the safety pin and do the push and pull method. 
we want to turn this bodice right side out. All of the seam allowance is on the inside of this bodice. Repeat this to the other side. Once you get the safety pin all the way down the strap, you're able to just grab it and turn the whole thing right side out. And now you have a really clean finished bodice. Since we can't physically do an understitch for the back neckline, I recommend just pinning your lining where you want it to sit and then taking it to the sewing machine and just top stitching along the back neckline just so everything stays in place. Lining up the lining hem to the hem of the main fabric. So I'm pinning that in place and just taking it to the sewing machine and doing like a quarter inch stay stitch all the way around the hem just so the lining and the main fabric stay together. I'm just taking my ruler and chalk and marking my channels for the elastic since I'm doing a smocked back. On the sewing pattern, I indicate where you need to chalk your lines to create the channels. So they are about 5 eighths of an inch wide because we are using half an inch elastic so you need a little bit of wiggle room. And just starting from one side seam all the way to the other side seam, you're going to be sewing along that. So don't forget to back tack when you reach each side seam. You end up with three channels, so we're going to end up cutting three pieces of elastic to feed through these channels. I'm making the size small baby doll dress, so my elastics measure 13 inches. So you can reference the sewing pattern to see how long you need to make your elastics depending on the size of your dress. So I'm just taking the safety pin and the elastic and feeding it through the first channel at the top. So you're just going to do the push and pull method. And once you see the end of the elastic reach that side seam, you want to just pin it in place and then keep feeding it all the way until you reach the other side seam. Remove the safety pin and pin that in place. Take it to your sewing machine and just tack both sides down so the elastic stays in place. And you wanna just repeat these exact same steps to the other two elastic pieces. So you're just feeding it, pinning it once you get to the side seams and then taking it to sewing machine and tacking everything in place. And the smocked back looks so cute in this fabric. So um, when I did this baby doll last time, it was in a lace fabric and the smocking detail in the back is just always the best part of this dress. For version two, you need to overlock all of your ends first. And if you guys are making version two, this is how we sew it together. So start by taking your back bodice and your back bodice lining. So I didn't have enough fabric for a lining. Um, this is all the mesh I had left over, but I made it work. I just cut out a piece big enough just so I had enough space for the elastic, um, but you want it to be the entire bodice. You would pin the lining to the main fabric and just do a stay stitch around the armholes the neckline and then the hem so you would just need to leave the side seams open so you can actually get in there to feed the elastic so just do the stay stitching on your sewing machine then you will actually sew in your channel so on the sewing pattern I indicate where you need to sew your channel so just chalk those in and now that you have your channels we're pretty much doing the same step as the version one bodice is where you're cutting your elastic. So my elastics were 13 inches, so feed those through. The only difference is this one actually has four channels, so we have four elastics on this bodice. Take it to the sewing machine and just stitch those down at the side seam. Once you've smocked your back bodice, take your front bodice and place right sides together at the side seam and pin. And at the shoulders, place right sides together and pin. Take it to the sewing machine and sew a quarter inch. Don't forget to back tack. Now that the bodice is sewn together, we can actually attach the sleeves. So make sure you mark all of your notches so you have your front and your back sleeve and the center of the sleeve. 
So you're gonna place right sides together of your sleeves and join them at the side seam and sew a quarter inch. Next, you're gonna take it to the sewing machine and from notch to notch, you're going to do two rows of stay stitching at a stitch size five. And then you can just like pull on the back threads and just start to gather that sleeve. And you can see it kind of starts to get rounded and it'll be so much easier to set it in like this. Take your sleeve and place right sides together at the side seams. So line up the side seams, place a pin, and you want to take your center notch of your sleeve and line it up to that shoulder seam. Kind of like fold your bodice over the sleeve and you have right sides facing each other. Next you want to line up the front notch to the front notch of the bodice and then the back notch of the sleeve to the back notch of the bodice and pin it all the way around. And if you need to like gather a little bit more, you can still pull on the threads and just ease it all in, but make sure it fits and pin it in place. Take it to your sewing machine and go very slowly when you do this and make sure nothing gets caught. So every few stitches, just check underneath that nothing's getting caught and your fabric isn't getting twisted. So just sew a quarter inch all the way around and don't forget to back tack when you reach the other end. And now that the bodice is put together, we can go ahead and hem the necklines. So fold that seam allowance under a quarter inch and pin it all the way around the neckline. Take it to the sewing machine and just sew that down. You want to hem the sleeve the same way we hemmed the neckline. And for the hem finish on the center front of this bodice, you want to fold under 5 eighths of an inch, pin that in place, take it to the sewing machine and sew a half inch. Don't forget to back tack. And now for version one, you're doing this exact same finish. So you're just overlocking that center front first and then folding it 5 eighths of an inch, pinning it in place. Now you can take it to the sewing machine, stitch half an inch away from the folded edge. Don't forget to back tack and you've created a channel for the drawstring. Next, take your quarter inch ribbon and cut two pieces that are 15 inches long. I take a safety pin and pin it to one end of the ribbon and just feed it through that center front channel that we created. When we reach the hem, you're going to unpin it and just kind of pull the ribbon back up until the very bottom of the ribbon is just kind of peeking out and then you want to place a pin there. Repeat it to the other side and now you can take it to the sewing machine and back tack a few times just to make sure the ribbon is secure. Repeat this step to version two. Now you can tie the perfect bow at the center front. For version one bodice, we can attach the sliders to make the adjustable straps now. You're going to take your strap and just feed it up and down the slide. And then you're just gonna feed it through the ring and bring the strap back up and kind of loosen the strap on the slide. And then you're gonna kind of feed it through and then you're gonna pull it back, if that makes sense. I've linked a tutorial where I go over this more in depth if you need help on attaching a slide. And now that our bodices are sewn, version 1 and version 2, you're going to follow the same exact steps for the skirt. On the sewing pattern, I have the pattern pieces for your skirt, but I like to slash and tear my silk chiffon just because I find it way easier than trying to lay it out and cut like a perfect rectangle out of it. When you're slashing and tearing silk chiffon specifically, you want to make sure you have the same amount of tension on both sides when you tear just to make sure you don't get any runs in your chiffon. After you cut out your main skirt fabric, take it to your overlock machine and just overlock 
the top and the bottom of the rectangles. Don't overlock the side seams, leave those alone first. And using a gathering foot, you're going to gather the bottom tier to be the same exact measurement as the top tier. So the bottom tier, use that gathering foot and you can see it's going to start gathering your chiffon. And I'm stitching at a stitch size 4.2 when I do this. And I still found the need to kind of pull on the bottom thread just to like gather a little bit more until it fit the top tier. After you've gathered the bottom tier to the top tier length, you're going to place right sides together and just pin along that seam. Take it to your sewing machine and sew with a half inch seam allowance. And I know the rest of the dress is being sewn with a quarter, but for the tiers, make sure you're sewing that seam at a half inch. You also want to take this slowly just so you don't accidentally like catch the bottom tier fabric because sewing with the gathers, it kind of makes it difficult. So just take this part slowly, especially with chiffon. After sewing that seam, take it to your iron and just kind of hold it taut and give it a good steam and press just so your gathers lay very flat. Make sure you're pressing that seam allowance away from the gathers. I'm taking the lace trim and I'm just going to top stitch it right on top of that seam. So when I take it to the sewing machine, I'm following that seam with the edge of the lace and just stitching it down. So I'm using an applique foot just because the foot is clear and I'm able to see where I'm stitching. So I'm stitching it all the way down on one side following that seam and then I'm going back around and stitching on the other side, making sure to catch both edges of the trim. Repeat all of these steps again because you need a front and a back skirt. Going to be making a French seam for the side seams. Take your front and your back skirt and place wrong sides together first. Pin along the side seams on both sides. Take it to your sewing machine and sew a quarter inch all the way down and do the same to the other side. Press your seam and take your rotary cutter and trim an eighth of an inch. Since wrong sides are together at the moment, you want to turn your skirt the other way so right sides are facing together instead. And now we can kind of roll and push that seam allowance to the very edge and pin it all the way down so we're encasing that seam allowance. Take it to the sewing machine and sew another quarter inch all the way down. Don't forget to back tack. This is the best way to clean finish silk chiffon, especially at the side seams. And just give everything a really good press, so press those front seams. And now we're going to take more lace trim and just attach it to the hem of the chiffon skirt. I recommend starting at one side seam and then just stitching it along that hem. Until you reach the other side, you're just going to overlap the lace. You want to trim away the excess. For the lining of the skirt, make sure you're using four-way stretch fabric. Place right sides together and pin at the side seams. Take it to your sewing machine and sew a quarter inch seam allowance. I just went ahead and overlocked my side seam. After you overlock the skirt lining, flip it right side out and you're going to take more lace trim and just add it to the hem of the lining. Mm -hmm. 
And to give the baby doll skirt a little bit more of a flare at the bottom, I'm taking this like five inch lace ruffled trim and cutting it to the length of the hem of the lining, placing right sides together and sewing that down to create a circle that I can just attach to the hem of the lining on the skirt. I'm matching up the side seams and pinning those into place. I take it to the sewing machine and I'm just following the edge of the lace and placing it on top of that ruffled lace trim because it has that piece of net on top. So I'm just like applying that lace trim to the edge of this ruffle and sewing it all the way down to the other side. Don't forget to back tack. I have linked this exact lace trim down below. This ruffled lace was perfect and it's super easy to dye the white one. Before we attach the bodice to the skirt, we need to take the front skirt and gather it to the length of the front bodice, which is 14 inches. So you just want to take the front of the skirt, take it to your sewing machine and use the gathering foot and just start to gather. and repeat the step to the front of the chiffon skirt and gather it. In the sewing pattern, I have a chart and I let you know what size and how much you need to gather your front skirt to. Gathering it to 14 inches and I'm pulling on the bobbin thread just because it needs to gather slightly more. So I'm just gathering a little bit more. Once I've gathered the front skirt of the lining to the desired measurement, I'm taking the chiffon over skirt and placing the fronts of the skirts facing each other and I'm just pinning them in place. So when you do this, make sure you have the right side of the chiffon skirt facing you and the right side of the lining facing you just so you have that really nice lace trim showing on both skirts. After you've pinned the front skirts together, take it to your sewing machine and sew a quarter inch. And now that you have your lining and your main skirt attached, you can see that the back lining and the back of the chiffon skirt are not attached yet, but the main lining can stretch, so you want to stretch that lining and find the center to the center of the chiffon skirt and just stretch it out and place a pin. And as we take it to the sewing machine, we're gonna do a quarter inch stitch, but you wanna stretch the lining as much as you can to fit the exact length of the chiffon. So you're just stretching and um, it's probably easier if you just put pins in like a few spots just to help you with like the amount of stretch for each section. Stretch the lining to the chiffon and just sew a quarter inch. And once you've attached the lining, just give it all a good press and kind of hold it taut, especially at the front, just to press those gathers. Before we attach the skirt to the bodice, make sure you overlock the hem of the bodice as well as the waistline on the skirt. Place your bodice upside down with the right side facing you and take your skirt and place it right on top of your bodice. And now you want to grab the front of the bodice and match it up with the center front of your skirt and place a pin and just pin it all the way and match up your side seams. Repeat to the other side. Also make sure to match up your center back bodice to your center back skirt, pin that in place, and now you can just match the entire center back. Because we added the elastic to the back bodice, you can see that it's kind of gathered. You wanna open up the hem of the fabric and just pin it to match the back skirt. Take it to the sewing machine. Sew with the 5.8 seam allowance, and this part's very important. So make sure you sew with a 5-8 seam allowance. Now 
more dress is almost done, just give it another good press so the chiffon lays flat at the waistline. Take your back waist and push that seam allowance down towards the chiffon. Take it to the sewing machine and hold that seam allowance down as you stitch very close to that edge, creating a channel for an elastic. It's easiest to sew the channel with the inside of the dress facing you, so you can see where you're stitching the channel, so try to stitch at the very edge. Now that you've sewn a channel, take your elastic and cut it down to the same measurement as the rest of your back elastics. Safety pin and just feed it through that channel we created. And once you see a little bit of the end hit the side seam at the back, just pin it and keep pushing and pulling until you reach the other side. Remove your safety pin, pin it in place. Take it to your sewing machine and do a zigzag stitch to tack both sides of the elastic down at the side seams. Your baby doll dress is complete. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and if you do recreate this baby doll dress don't forget to tag me on instagram my handle is at transformations by tracy across all of my platforms please don't forget to like comment and subscribe it really is the best way to support your favorite creators for free i hope you guys have a wonderful new year and i'll see you next time